So the saga continues between Progress and Onslaught. And it could possibly end before AQ is released. So it's going to be interesting to see. Because I think, you know, this 1851 by Progress is going to be very, very difficult to beat. Especially with just that one more possible DMF buff week. And, you know, no Midsummer Festival world buffs. Um, you still got the chocolate food buffs, though, from the Midsummer Festival. Those last about two weeks. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really, really close to see if, you know, Onslaught can reclaim that number one spot. Um, I knew Progress, they were out for revenge. So this is going to be really close. There's only one more possible Dark Moon Fair Day. So anyways, uh, for this video, I had to hard pivot a couple times, uh, especially after watching Sarth's video on it. Um, there's some important YouTube comments down there uh, to check out. As you can see here, Karakan. I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Karakan? Anyways, um, Progress, they actually only use one hunter. So I think this is actually kind of interesting because do you go with that one hunter or do you go with two hunters, possibly do double drakes? You know, do you sacrifice that second hunter to, to just maximize your warrior damage output? Who knows? The, the meta is still being developed, which I think is really interesting. Anyways, we'll talk about raid compositions later, uh, but back to progress. Here are their kills. A 10 second Razor Gore, a 15 second Veil, which is super important to not get burning adrenaline on anyone. Their Broodlord's a little misleading because, you know, they had to spend 5 to 10 seconds pulling him to the back. Um, but everything else, just really solid. So let's jump into the Razor Gore. Flask up. Oh no, that's not how you want to start it. The fucking ass pull. That's a couple seconds lost. Alright, so like five seconds late on the timer because of the ass pull. So perhaps an auto run misclick or something? I don't know. But notice the missing starting buffs. Alright, here comes last egg. Make sure I wait for the Razor Gore heal, the Bloodthirst, and go. Clean Razor Gore. That was optimal time. Oh wait, no. Plus five seconds, though. I mean, if we didn't have the fuck up, that would have been a really good Razor Gore. Flask now. Death Wish now. And Wreck. Execute dodge, re. We dodged a bomb though. That's all that matters. So as you heard, they dodged bomb. Uh, it's probably the most important part, not having to deal with that. And yeah, they don't get an unlucky blast wave. They don't get slowed down here. So uh, very clean, and they're moving on to suppression. All right, clean veil pack. Time to start suppression room. The m moment of truth. Now, Sarth mentioned about the seven hatcher requirement for Warcraft logs. And as you'll see here, a rogue actually gets slowed down here. They wait for him to disarm the trap, but they just, you know, no big deal. Just pull the hatcher. And everything rel goes relatively smoothly after that. I wonder for AQ, what are the trash requirements going to be? Um, there might be some invis slash soulstone skipping shenanigans. So we'll see. What trap caught me? What? Where was that trap? I didn't even see it. Now I believe this trap suppresses them from ranged. Uh, World of Warcraft is known for having bad visual to area of effect alignment, so wouldn't surprise me. And here they pull three hatchers, blow some sappers, just AoE them down. And yeah, there's one more hatcher, so possibly could have gotten that in the sapper group uh, but as you can see here broodlord is pulled so it's going to take him a while to travel and they're actually positioned in between the two traps that they, they got to worry about so it's a little bit of awkward positioning but if you guys remember from the onslaught run they actually just pulled him all the way to the corner where they only have to really deal with this one trap as opposed to being positioned in between two so 
I don't know. It's uh, you know, their decision, and yeah, overall it still goes relatively smoothly. Well, that trap was unfortunate, but uh, we're still on pace for a decent suppression room. Oh, Ripata, that's really bad. So Hada actually takes a mortal strike here. They did take a blast wave, so the priests were probably AOE healing, but Hada ended up losing his world buffs. I got a parry from behind. The boss wasn't moving. I was 100% behind. Okay. Okay, well, we, we killed... We killed him with Essence of the Red Up, so... It could have been better, but... It could have been worse, so... So when it comes to techie packs, progress is pretty conservative. They just do single pulls. Alright, need to click my dampen off, put up, uh, stamina... Fap up. So Firemall actually has perfect timing and gets pulled in relatively quickly after the Wormguard dies. And here's Firemall. That was a really good Firemall timing. Holy shit, that was, I like, perfect Firemall timing. We needed that. Alright, clean fire maw? Uh, I did not have my cape on. I'm a bad, bad boy. But it's okay, I got my cape on now. One thing you'll notice about these guilds is that they are highly prioritizing wearing an Ixia skill cloak. They don't want to have any mistakes. As you'll see here, there's a, a comment from Sarth's video about not wearing a cloak. So, it's super important. Even though a min-maxer will try and get away with wearing a normal cloak, you know, whoever might snap aggro, and then all of a sudden you get Shadow Flames. So it's best just to be conservative. Make sure you wear your cape. Now, progress, they go with the regular dick mode. Uh, onslaught, they go big dick mode here and go triple pack, and I'm never going to get tired of this. This is so cool. Um, it's really risky. Onslaught did get one death, I believe, from this pull. But overall, I mean, like, you got to give it to Onslaught here. Uh, just really, really cool to see that pull in action. But, you know, progress, they, they know what they want to do. Just go with the conservative route, just execute normally. And, yeah, everything goes relatively smoothly. Just, um, you know, nothing really of concern here. Just uh, going one by one. I don't want to pot here. I need to go out for a second. Come on, get me some heals. Now, just kidding. They have a little bit of a concern here. Uh, potatoes, one of their top parsers, actually gets so close to death. Alright, swapping droids now. Did that go off? Okay, there we go, I got it off now. Alright, here we go. Fapping now. So they drop target dummies just in case they get bronze. I think we've lost Kia to a disconnect. That's uh, unfortunate, but I mean, we're through the heavy healing parts, so... Now, their Ebonrock goes pretty good, um, not too much healing, but Karakan mentioned that Progress, they only did one Hunter for the single pull as opposed to the double pulls that Onslaught did. And for Onslaught's problem, I think, was just a, mainly a timing problem. Um, not really sure. I think maybe Krilton had a, a bad add-on timing warning or something. I, I have no idea, but as you can see here, they get wing buffeted and just really causes a bunch of havoc in the in the raid. Now, Krilton was using Nat Pagel's Broken Reel, which, uh, you know, every guild should be getting just for Four Horsemen and Naxxramas, so make sure you're doing that for... make sure you're killing Gazronk and ZG. But back to progress, you know, just smooth execution, move on to Flame Gore, and you'll notice that their Paladin is starting to pull the triple uh, worm, worm Guards. So, right here, there's a snap pull on aggro, Almost flames the raid, but everyone's wearing cloaks anyways. And yeah, they just keep on doing their thing. That was really close to a raid gain breath. We should be moving the boss more. Why are we not moving the boss more? Come on, move the freaking boss! And here, we'll see the skip. They actually pull to the inside, as opposed to the outer wall, and just soulstone their paladin. Clean skip, alright. 
Uh, fuck, I forgot to bind this. Now, their Chromagus did roll time lapse, so, but you know, no big deal. Overall, progress gets a 58 second time lapse Chromag. Alright. Diamond Flask on. Now, this disconnect is a pretty big deal. They're going to lose their Blessing of Might Paladin, which is really unfortunate because if you disconnect for too long, you'll actually lose the buff mid fight, which happens here on Nefarian. This is going to be really close. This is going to be really freaking close. Yikes. And here, they pull the last Worm Guard pack, they just split them up, they don't really cluster them with uh, target dummies or anything. And here, we gotta give a shout out to two people in Tetsu's chat, Alpha Omega and Link, with some solid predictions here. Let's go. I think we might have it. I think we might have it, guys. Bro, I didn't forget Cloak, don't do that to me. We, we got it. We got it! We got it! We can do a one minute nef. We can do a one minute nef. We got it! Let's go! I can't see wind force on the threat meter. We lost might because we lost might because Kia has been DC'd for too long, so we don't have might anymore. Bro! Feels bad. We got it. We got it, boys! We got it! Sub 19! Oh, hi, yo! Execute! Execute! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Sub 20? I've never seen a sub 20 in my life! I skipped it! Straight to sub 19! Never seen a sub 20 in my life! The pace! It was there! Let's go! Woo! That's a Streets 112! EU back on top, where we belong, of course. So Progress is back on top. They reclaimed the number one spot. Let's see if Onslaught can pull it off with only one more attempt left. Um, you know, still got Chocolate Buffs, Darkman Fair, no Midsummer Festival World Buffs, but Progress overall just really clean. Um, you know, I don't think they had any number one world record boss kills, but overall their trash, their execution, all relatively smooth. Probably the only big mistake was losing Hata from a mortal strike, um, but it's kind of hard to equate that, you know, how much time saved uh, having that warrior fully buffed is. Obviously some time saves were on the Razor Gore starts, the Paladin disconnect, um, maybe taking some riskier strategies uh, it was really interesting to see some of the priests do a lot of damage as well especially on nefarian here i wonder if they can uh, maybe min max a little bit more uh, it's really hard at this level i think 18 minutes is the ceiling i think it's going to be very difficult in current phase to ever break um 18 minutes but you know breaking sub 19 i think is a huge accomplishment and let's see if Onslaught can retaliate and possibly even reclaim that number one spot. It's going to be really close. Taking a brief look here back at raid comps, I think the biggest thing is progress having that one hunter and only one mage and really min-maxing their melee DPS because as you can see here, a lot of guild comps are running two hunters, two mages. So, you know, is progress really setting the stage here with that comp? So we only got one more left. Let's see how everything closes out. Let's see if we get some fireworks towards the end here.